Putin may have just won the war in Ukraine. Let me explain. Europe is addicted to Russian natural gas. That's why Russia supplies Europe with 40% of its energy, with most of that coming through its natural gas pipeline Nord Stream 1. And Putin just shut off that pipeline, conveniently right before the start of a very cold European winter. Vladimir Putin just turned up the pressure. Russian gas firm Gazprom is scheduled to switch off its largest natural gas pipeline running to Germany today. Nord Stream 1 pipeline shutdown has left Europe on the edge. He's unleashing one of the most powerful economic weapons in his arsenal. Russia will turn off the taps of the Nord Stream 1 pipeline, which the country says is necessary to carry out maintenance. The question is if it will switch it back on. Right now, Russia holds all the cards. So winter is coming and Europe's energy supply just dropped by almost half. That means if Europe doesn't come to the negotiation table with Putin fast, there's gonna be protests, riots, civil unrest, economic collapse, maybe even revolutions. Because Europeans won't be able to heat their homes. Businesses won't be able to afford electricity to keep their doors open. So businesses will shut down, which means people become jobless, which means people won't be able to feed their families. And when the masses can't feed their families, that is when the pitchforks come out. That's when the social unrest happens. That's when leaders get toppled, or at the bare minimum voted out of office. Which is another way of saying that if Europe doesn't bow down to Putin's terms, the entire European economy will literally crumble. And we already see it happening. Europe's energy prices are already going to the moon right now as we speak. Take a look around you and society seems so peaceful most of the time. But what people forget is that you're only one meal away from a revolution. Putin is well aware of this, and he's going to use all this pressure to get exactly what he wants. Europe is going to have to choose. Do they hashtag stand with Ukraine, a country that most Europeans have never cared about before the war? Or do they want to feed their families? My name is Jake Tran, and we make documentaries on money, power, war, and crime so that you can see the world for what it really is. A giant game of acquiring power. You can't get out of this game either way, so instead of being a victim, why not learn to be a better player? Your parents, teachers, friends, society will never teach you any of this, so we're going to. Stay dangerous and let's get into it. Europe's addiction to Russian gas started innocently enough. After the Soviet Union fell, many saw reopening trade with Russia as a means to encourage diplomacy, the start of a new era, especially in Germany. Even then, German leaders first promised themselves that they would never let Russia supply more than 10% of their natural gas imports. We don't want to become too dependent on the Russians now, would we? But taking a bite of the apple was just too tempting. So once Europe got its first taste of glorious, cheap Russian gas, there was no going back. It was just too affordable compared to anywhere else. But the cherry on top was the Green Movement. In 2018, Trump went to Europe and gave them a stark warning. Germany will become totally dependent on Russian energy if it does not immediately change course. Do not become dependent on Russian gas. But because Trump is Trump, they didn't listen. Instead, Germany laughed in his face as Trump was talking. So instead of listening to Trump, Europe decided to listen to a 16-year-old girl instead. Greta Thunberg became the world's most influential environmental activist while she was still in high school. She organized and inspired student strikes around the globe, insisting that world leaders weren't doing enough to stop a climate crisis. She grew insanely popular, not just because she was so young, but because of her very blunt and ruthless public speaking style. Kind of like Trump's style if you think about it. So three months after Trump spoke in Europe, Greta took the stage at the United Nations Climate Change Conference. She was not worried about the geopolitical consequences of being too dependent on Russia. So her warning was the polar opposite. Because you are too scared of being unpopular. You are not mature enough to tell it like it is. This is all wrong. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. How dare you? How dare you pretend that this can be sold and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is? I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. And panic they did. The EU responded by shutting down their nuclear power plants, abandoning coal, and investing in green energy like hydroelectric, wind, and solar. 
But even then, the economics for these green alternatives just wasn't there. So Europe was forced to make up the difference with natural gas. And since gas is slightly cleaner than oil or coal, that seemed okay for the EU. And who do they go to for natural gas? Russia. There's one thing Putin wants above all else. To keep Ukraine and other former Soviet countries out of NATO forever. Imagine if America's neighbors Mexico and Canada wanted to get into a military alliance with Russia. The US would do everything in its power to prevent that from happening, including violence and intimidation. That's because a deal like that would open up the door for Russian troops, weapons, and nuclear missiles to be placed right outside America's doorstep. And this is exactly what the US has been doing since the Soviet Union fell, even when they promised the Russians they wouldn't. That is what Putin really wants. No NATO for the former Soviet countries, especially Ukraine, the former crown jewel of the Soviet Union. So in January, a month before the invasion, Putin offered a treaty with the US saying exactly that. No more NATO expansion on their doorstep. And as predicted, the US turned him down flat, taking the moral high ground about not negotiating with bullies. The fact of the matter is we never were willing to negotiate at all on those two demands, at all. And instead, we basically just claimed they were a pretext by the Russians for an invasion. Putin couldn't get what he wanted by playing fair, so he decided to take it up a notch. He invades Ukraine. He obviously thought he was going to be successful and take over the whole country, but even the invasion wasn't successful. He knew that with the EU's dependency on his natural gas, they'll eventually have to cave in and give him what he originally wanted. Putin's calculus is to go as far and as deep as he can go so that he could eventually negotiate himself back out in a way that leaves him with what he originally wanted in the first place. I think this just goes to show you that if you're going to sort of engage in proactive foreign policy, you need to make sure that domestically you don't have any Achilles heels. And Europe had a massive Achilles heel, which is energy. They're going to have to take this much more seriously uh, going well, into the, the next year the, because the, they've the, enabled the, a madman. When Russian troops moved towards Kiev, the EU also got on their moral high ground and pulled out all their big geopolitical guns. As Putin predicted, Europe sanctioned Russia and put up a good fight. Like Germany, who refused to certify Russia's newest pipeline, Nord Stream 2. It was Russia's brand new shiny twin to Nord Stream 1. And without Germany's approval, it's just sitting there completely unused. And when the two countries attempted peace negotiations, the West warned this was a bad idea. Europe insisted that Putin is not to be negotiated with under any circumstances while somehow not thinking that Russia would use the only card they had. One uh, pipeline shut down. Nord Stream pipeline shut down. Tonight, there is nothing in the pipeline from Russia. Russia is shutting down gas supplies from a major pipeline to Europe for the next three days. Now Europe is set to freeze, both literally and economically. Yet no EU countries are changing course. Instead, the EU is telling citizens to suck it up and save electricity. Whatever we do, one thing is for sure, we have to save electricity, but we have to save it in a smart way. So what we have to do is flatten the curve and uh, avoid the peak demands. We will propose a mandatory target for reducing electricity use at peak hours or possibly threatening jail time if people turn their heat above 66 degrees Fahrenheit. But winter is fast approaching, and things are going to get a lot worse. And no, it's not as simple as Europe switching over to other energy sources before winter. They do not have the infrastructure to switch from natural gas to something like oil in time. You can't convert oil into natural gas to heat people's homes. It's impossible structurally right now in the time frame that it's needed. So when the protests come, when the civil unrest comes, when politicians get voted out of office, we'll see who breaks first. Germany will probably be the first to break, 
Because while Europe got 40% of its natural gas from Russia, Germany was getting more than half of theirs from Russia. That Russian endgame is essentially the following, which is that Germany will probably be the first to capitulate, but it'll be a combination of the United States and Europe who negotiate some kind of a settlement. And if a deal isn't made, the results could be catastrophic. There's going to be significant rioting and civil unrest in Europe, and, um, and there will be a significant, significant economic effect. The economy will be shattered. Economies will be shattered, and people will be really unhappy. As this video was being edited, Russia announced a mandatory draft of 300,000 civilians to fight his war in Ukraine. Вчера я получил повестку, согласно которой я должен явиться для сверки документов воинского учета сегодня, 22 сентября 2022 года. Моя группа В сейчас подлежит воинскому призыву в военное время. So it looks like the Russian military might be on its last leg. So the only question that remains is who will last longer, Europe without natural gas or Russia in Ukraine? Regardless, what all of this really shows is that the masses today are complete hypocrites. A few months ago, it was either you stand with Ukraine or you're a Putin-loving fascist. But the minute, the minute the public feels any amount of actual pain, the minute their lives are inconvenienced, you'll see that it's just all talk. Everyone supposedly hates Amazon, yet they still shop at Amazon. Everyone hates Walmart, yet they still shop at Walmart. Everyone hates Putin until they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Being the target of blackmail is a nasty experience. Whether the blackmailer is Russia or just one person. And one person that was a master at blackmail was Efri Jepstein. He understood that today, the best way to blackmail a powerful leader is to get compromising footage of them with underage girls. Once you had that, these powerful men became your female dogs. And it appears that he was probably some sort of intelligence agent as well. Because every time he got in trouble with the law, he would be magically set free. Until one day, his secret protectors decided that he was no longer worth the risk. And we all know what happened then. But the problem is, going into the life of Efri Jepstein and all his exploits would definitely get demonetized on YouTube. So we've released a private documentary available right now to members of this channel. It goes over all the gruesome, disgusting details and so far, members have been loving it. All you have to do to watch this private documentary right now is to click that join button below. Once you join, you'll get instant access to our other exclusive documentaries as well, like CIA black sites, MKUltra, the Bin Laden papers, and more. These are the things they should be teaching you in school, but aren't. And unlike university, we're not going to charge you thousands of dollars. Nope. You can get access to all of this for just $5 a month. And there's a refund policy too, unlike most YouTube memberships. So if you join and you don't think it's worth it, email us within your first month of joining for the first time and we will personally refund you for your first month. After your first month, there is no refund. Click that join button below to watch now. So what do you guys think? Was this a genius move on Putin's part or a really dumb move on the EU's part for not realizing that he would do this? Let me know in the comments below. We're posting on TikTok again at JakeTran33. That's the handle right now. So that'll be linked below. And yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at JakeTran. But that is going to wrap it up. Thanks for being part of the Watch the End Club. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.